this is going to change your life. I can guarantee that. It's almost as equivalent as, let's say, going from not reading any books to reading a book a month to then reading a book a week. It just it's completely going to rewire who you are or how you perform or what outcomes do you actually get to. Specifically, I want to talk about second brain and second brain is a technique or a set of techniques I've been using for the last couple of years. And it helped me one, write a book on UX because it allowed me to organize my life, make it more systematic and recall the specific bits which are important to allowed me to work on things like this YouTube channel and pick up different inputs and things of that nature. Three, allows me to be better design leader. And four, I'm working on so many different projects that's the only way I can actually manage that is having a replicate, better brain, which is actually within the software in one of the tools you probably are already using. So let me explain first why second brain is the kick-ass way to actually approach your life. Number one is the problem we all face and it's you might be interested in something general like accessibility or pick up any other topic, VR or emerging tech or just a keyword. You're just passionate and you're like, oh, I want to end up doing it or I want to write this book or I want to work on this app. And you might have encountered a lot of newsletters, articles, videos. You might like them, you might reshare them, you might save them for later, bookmark them on Chrome, but then you keep forgetting it or you're not really using that knowledge. You're just taking it in and you know of it. And maybe in passing conversations, you mention it because, oh, I maybe read that study or that article which said X, Y, Z, but you're not adding that information anywhere. It's just the knowledge which is passing. Our hardware and our software is very limited. What can you do? You need to replicate or allow yourself to have almost like a, a hardware <laughs> attached to your brain, which you can tap into into by keyword or by category and pull some sort of information. This is what second brain is. It's a framework to allow you to create a structure of information. And as you go through your life, reading books, uh, listening to podcasts, watching videos, you can basically extract those information bits and save it for later, but in a way you can recall very easily. And second brain is nothing new. This is a para method by Tiago Forte. He's coming up with a book shortly, but you can actually view other videos if this doesn't do it justice or ask me any questions down below. Happy to do extensions or follow ups. But para method is this universal way to handle your knowledge, especially the one you keep aside. And it stands for projects, areas, resources and archives. Basically, this is how you should be organizing everything you save or everything you put for some later use. All the things you save or all the things you should be saving up in your knowledge base should be linked to a project. So let's say maybe it's a book you're writing, a video you're making, a project for UX you're researching right now, or that app you want to make, or maybe it's one of your work subjects or projects, making a category like that, which you can easily tap into and find that resource. The second one is areas and areas is basically much more general life areas. Let's say fitness could be one, UX research could be one. It could be more specific like design operations or behavioral science or psychology. You know, it's area of your life which you are passionate about. And again, it's very individual, just like the projects are. This is how my Evernote looks like with a para method. I used other tools, but I'm going to again cover that in a minute. Ultimately, I have a few different categories, but as you can see, they're split in P means project, basically. A means area, again, just like I described. But for example, my projects are design X lead, the nine to five work related stuff, the advisory work, UX ROI, business and marketing is the area, career, DIY, fitness and health, ideas, hustle, entrepreneurship, leadership, learning and productivity, research and design, tech and code, and then writing are the areas. To you, it might not make sense. And I have a lot of subcategories, but the next bit, which is important, is the resources. All those different bits which you save. Again, it could be a tweet, it could be the note you made on Kindle or a highlight you made on an ebook, or maybe it's an excerpt, an infographic. I love to save infographics, let's say. To show you one of the recent ones I saved, was this service design text which I found on LinkedIn. So I'm saving this for later so I can actually inform some sort of decisions or inform maybe, I don't know, new write-up, new article, maybe show it to my teammates, maybe share it across somewhere else. But I know that this resource, which I found, is going to actually be useful in the future. That's super important. Don't save 
anything you don't want to reuse. You shouldn't even almost read any books if you don't have a problem for it, unless it's, you know, to relax, entertainment, things of that nature. But even then, if you read a book and you're seeing this nice quote, this is your resource, save it, but put it in that resource bucket. And to add to this, what's really important, it has to be linked to a project and it has to be linked to the area. And that's to aid your recall. And this is the strongest bit of the PARA framework because it allows you to either recall the information by the project you're working on right now so you can easily jump into it and see exactly because you know where it's at your mind is just gonna click it's very simple and flexible and the next one is the area of your life which is more, more general so maybe in the next two years you're gonna be like oh i had this article about immune system boosters i literally just had i was sick with covid but i say hundreds of different articles on immune system the studies things of that nature and i know if in my back of my mind that i just have a lot of information about immune system and how to boost it. I don't know what specifically, but just then I need it. I have the area of my life, which is fitness, biohacks, things of that nature. I jump into it and I have a list of things which are categorized either by project or by category or have some sort of other keywords. All for you to actually use that information and act as a second brain instead of just a bookmarks bar or something which you never go to. And now the last one is archives. And this is very simple, but it's all the information you are not using right now. I'm basically using archives for everything I might need in the future and everything which I think I'm going to need to return at some point, but not right now, maybe not in the next year, maybe it's not even relevant to my area or my life, or maybe you want to put your own spin to it and add archives of different areas and projects or categories or things of that nature. It's up to you how you handle it, but you need somewhere to store the information so it doesn't disappear entirely into the ether. Now, before jumping into technicalities or how I use it weekly, let's say, or how I use it on a spot, how I recall those different bits. What's worth mentioning is the tools, because that's a lot of people are going to be immediately, oh, I need Evernote, I need Notion. Take a tool which, one, allows you to be very flexible, two, allows you to capture the information universally and on the go. That's why I love Evernote, because it has a web clipper. It's very, very fast to recall the information. It's very, very fast to save a snippet from the web. You can just right click on the information or an image and it gives you options to save images or full article. So you could use Notion for that too, but Notion is super slow. And just to show you how my second brain looked like in Notion and a template, which you can kind of get from different resources. You can just Google and find a template of it. But how it worked, I had my project, I had my resources, I have the areas of things. Of course, I adjust it as I transition to Evernote, but you can save a lot of different bits, categorize them, link them across the database so you can recall it easier. If I would want some sort of information about productivity and it links all the different things I saved from before. And then you can also tag them so it's even easier to recall because you have the specific tag to the things which you can search by. Again, it requires a lot of time to do that because in Notion, if you save something, you need to add a tag, you need to add a date, you need to manage ultimately and you need to carve out enough time. This is the reason why I stopped using Notion, but maybe it works for you. For example, you could also pick other tools like Obsidian, let's say, which visually showcase you the links between different information sets. Ultimately, what matters here is again that you would be able to save it on the go and easily add those notes. So you, let's say if you are reading a lot on your phone on the go on a bus or commuting and let's say you need to wait for I don't know a few minutes to get it your laptop out to file those things that's too much time. You should be able to just in a few clicks save that information for the later so you can actually come back to it and then categorize or remove it entirely or archive. If you have any questions again leave them down below. I'm going to show you one last bit of how I manage my information in Evernote. Again, this is universal from a framework perspective. So you can just look at it and you can extract the bits how to use it in other tools, right? So things what I started learning and doing is really adding a specific icon or a symbol next to the thing just to indicate which one is a project and which one of them is general area where I'm saving things. Still filling up. 
But then I categorize that and let's say if it's a project like a book on UX ROI, which I'm starting to work on, I'm saving a lot of different bits from the internet, from the books I'm reading, from the different podcasts, audiobooks, things of that nature. I'm adding notes, but as I add it, I also make sure to write up a bit of a snippet saying this is about, this is why it's important. Trying to, with every note you save, add a bit of a blurb, which allows you to go and search for it later on because you can like free word, you know, free text search for it. But also it allows you to almost explain to your future self why this is important or why were you thinking that this would be a good addition to that article you write or that project. Maybe you're researching something in a current project and you want to recap that information a bit later on. You could write up yourself a note ultimately and save it quickly jumps as well to the tags. Of course, tags is quite hard to manage because it you can end up with way too many. The taxonomy could just blur and water down. Be careful of that. One thing which you might note in this case that I have the inbox edition. Inbox here doesn't mean that I'm receiving emails, but some tools would allow you to actually just email yourself and then store that email as a note. So you could also do that. What this inbox is, is really the additions from like the past week or two weeks. You need to schedule in maybe a Monday, maybe a Sunday, maybe every other fortnightly Sunday. But basically everything what I save ends up first and foremost in the inbox. And then because I have a fresher take, I can review one by one and quickly file it to. For example, this service design taxonomy, I don't really have a specific project which would relate to this, but I know a few areas where I could put it. I could put it in my nine to five, one of the projects of education, let's say, or evangelism. I could also put it on one of the advisory things I'm working on right now to influence this more holistic service lines. Or I could generally just put it into my research and design area, which has a ton of different bits and notes. The last bit what I want to leave you with is how I handle the information, let's see if I need to recall. Because I'm saving it in such a way that I know my categories, I know my areas of life, I know my projects which I'm busy with. This then allows me to quickly pull the information as I need to. Again, I don't want to save anything I'm not going to use, let's say. Massive fan of bookmarking things like behavior research or psychology studies or things which actually provides me with much more specific information which I can pull out and use as a support element in let's say presentations or evangelism efforts or even project work. The other day I was looking at VR and I have a VR category as a tag in my design and research element. This is where I store almost every element which you think oh this is interesting and it would be really relevant for let's say the future. I just save it there and then the time is going to come and I'm going to work on something like VR and they need some behavioral studies on specific elements. I can just pull that category and see all those different hundreds elements which I curated myself as a shortlist for my future self. It's all about the utility of it. If you don't use it, there is no point in saving that information because it's just going to get lost. And I don't really know what else to add. I think we should wrap up here. But if you have any questions, do leave them down below. And on that note, I'll see you next time.